my name is Joseph Van Hyde. In this video, I'll be giving an abstract for my upcoming paper, New Normality Constructions for Continuing Fractions, set to appear in the journal that comes here. Let's go to the slides. To begin, we need some definitions. There are currently over 20 definitions of normal in mathematics just listed on Wikipedia at the time of this recording, at least. We will be interested in the definition of a normal number. And to begin that, we start with every mathematician's favorite number, pi, some of whose digits are listed here. Now, as we look at the digits of pi, one could ask a very basic question. Do we see the number 7 as often as we see the number 4? And do we see the string of digits 2, 3 as often as we see the string of digits 0, 8? If every string of digits is as common as every other string of digits of the same length, then we say that pi is normal in base 10. This slide gives the more technical definition of normality in base 10, which you're encouraged to read through if you're interested. The study of normal numbers dates back over a century. In 1909, Borel proved that almost all real numbers are normal in base 10. Today, this can be proved with a variety of techniques, everything from the strong law of large numbers to the pointwise ergodic theorem. Despite this, no commonly used mathematical constant, whether it be pi, e, the square root of 2, or the natural logarithm of 2, is known to be normal, although all of the things I've just listed are conjectured to be. Since the problem of determining the normality of a given constant, such as pi, is so hard, we instead try to understand the concept of normality itself better by providing explicit examples of normal numbers. This has grown into a popular area of mathematics, attracting such luminaries as Turing and Erdős. On this slide, we give some well-known normal numbers. In each case, the number was formed by concatenating a certain sequence of integers, whether it be all of the integers, all of the primes, or all of the perfect squares. The parentheses listed on this page are just for visual aid. They don't have any effect on the number itself. The copeland erdős constant deserves some extra focus. These two mathematicians show that any sufficiently dense increasing sequence of integers, when concatenated, would result in a normal number. Surprisingly, the primes themselves count as a sufficiently dense sequence. The focus of my paper is on continued fraction expansions, not on decimal expansions, and here we briefly recall what continued fraction expansions actually look like. For rational numbers, this expansion is always unique and infinite. For rational numbers, there are exactly two expansions, both finite, such as the example at the bottom of the slide. The notion of normality also extends to continued fraction expansions. In such CF normal numbers, we expect each string of digits to appear with a given frequency. However, we no longer have the simplification of saying that we want all strings to appear as often as other strings of the same length. The desired frequency now depends on associated definitions regarding cylinder sets and the Gauss measure. But as an explicit example, the frequency of the digit 1 in a CF normal number should be log 4 thirds divided by log 2, or approximately 41.5%. Again, almost all real numbers are CF normal. However, again, we do not know of any commonly used mathematical constant that is CF normal. Oddly, the number E is known to not be CF normal. We know, for example, that no digit 3 appears in the continued fraction expansion of E. Unlike in the base 10 case, there are extremely few examples of CF normal numbers. We will discuss the rather elegant construction of Adler, Keene, and Smorodinsky, but besides this, I only know of one other CF normal number, the rather brute force construction due to Postnikov and Piotrowski Shapiro. Their method was rediscovered and generalized to many other systems in the recent work of Modric and Mance. The construction of Adler, Keen, and Smorodinsky starts by taking all of the rationals between 0 and 1 and arranging them in the following way. First one half, then one third and two thirds, then one quarter, two quarters, and three quarters, and so on. Note that non-reduced fractions such as two quarters are included. Then for each of these rational numbers, we write out the shorter of the two finite continued fraction expansions for these rationals. So we start with two, then three, then one, two, and so on. Then if we concatenate all of these finite strings into one infinite string, the result is a CF normal number. Proving that this construction really does yield a CF normal number requires two big ideas. The first big idea is to show that almost all rational numbers are good in the sense that they have very long continued fraction expansions with digit frequencies that are close to the digit frequencies of a CF normal number. This is analogous to how if one picks a very large integer at random, 
one expects it to have about one-tenth of its digits be sevens. The second big idea is needed to prove the first big idea. The sequence of rationals given in the construction is arranged according to the size of the denominator, but from a dynamical and ergodic perspective, it is much more natural to look at rationals arranged by the length of their continued fraction expansion. They cleverly show how to connect the two. The new results of my paper are very similar to the result of Copeland and Erdős. Instead of needing all of the rationals between 0 and 1, I show that a sufficiently dense subset works just as well. The restriction to be sufficiently dense is enough to cover, for example, the subsequence of rationals with square-free numerators and denominators. So notice that the number 4 never appears in this sequence because 4 is not square-free. However, in sharp contrast to Copeland and Erdős, the primes no longer count as being sufficiently dense. In fact, they are as dense as it is possible to be without being sufficiently dense. But further tweaks to the method of Adler, Keen, and Smarodinsky allows one to construct CF normal numbers out of the sequence of rationals with prime, numerator, and denominator. This result relies on sieve methods and the fact that primes are well distributed across residue classes. Recall that one of the big ideas of Adler, Keen, and Smarodinsky was that almost all rational numbers were good for some appropriate definition of goodness. They did this by relying on ergodic methods that, by their very nature, were inexplicit. To prove these new results, I had to quantify just what was meant by almost all. And to do this, I made use of more explicit metrical results, many of which were first proved by Philip. That concludes this abstract. Thank you for watching.